there's been so much talk back and forth of when LaMarcus did tell you he was going to sign with the Spurs. Can you tell us when you found out from LaMarcus yep. he wasn't coming back? So I found out, we found out from LaMarcus 3 o'clock on July 3rd. Um, L.A. called uh, late that afternoon. He had, already, he had just had his second meeting with the Spurs, uh, which clearly went better. And he basically called and just said, you know, hey, look, I, you know, we went through everything. And then he said, look, I'm down to Phoenix and, and San Antonio. And I want to sleep on it. I want to make a decision by tomorrow morning, but I want it narrowed down to, to two teams. How disappointed are you that he's not coming back? You know, disappointed. Um, you know, obviously, look, I mean, he's a great player. He was here for nine years. Um, we had him for three, two of which were very successful. Um, I think we always knew it was, a, you know, it was a possibility. You know, we didn't inherit the happiest player in the world, you know, three years ago. Um, but, you know, we did a really good job of, you know, kind of partnering with him and his agents and listening to what he felt like he needed in order to make a long-term commitment to the organization. Um, clearly, that was on that path right up until probably when Wes got hurt. Um, you know, we kind of fell apart at that point. You know, our chemistry was disrupted. We didn't achieve what we had anticipated achieving after the trade deadline that year. So, um, you know, but look, we've been preparing for it for a while. Um, you know, I think in all of our conversations with LA, you know, everything that we tried to do to make sure he would want to commit long term, we also left ourselves some outs. You know, um, we're not inhibited by toxic contracts that were signed in an effort just to keep him happy. Um, we had a very competitive team on the floor, a team we felt like could go to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, we were on that path, you know, right up until the injury bug kind of caught up with us. But um, at least we're not la loaded down with that. We have our draft picks going forward. We have really good young players. We have flexibility. Um, and that was the position we knew we needed to be in in the event that he left. You know, we weren't going to bury our head in the sand and just hope he came back. We were going to do everything in our power to bring him back. But if that didn't happen, we didn't want to have to deal with the fallout that some other organizations have had in the past when, you know, a franchise caliber player left. You know, it, it, the entire league wasn't chasing LaMarcus because there were other alternatives at a commensurate level of ability. I mean, there's a reason L.A. was the hottest free agent on the entire market. And basically, the entire market waited for him until July 4th for him to make a decision. So if there were alternatives that were at his level, you know, everybody in the league would have been pursuing them. Um, you know, what we did, though, we did pursue Greg Monroe. Um, you know, we, we talked to LaMarcus, just so you understand the timing. You know, look, this was an ongoing process. I mean, it was a two-year recruiting process, to be honest with you, with LaMarcus. Um, we met with him multiple times um, after the season ended, um, the last of which was immediately prior to the draft. They weren't recruiting visits so much as sitting down, talking about the roster, talking about what we did right, what we did wrong, what kind of guys we should be looking at in free agency, how we should utilize the draft to get better. Um, and throughout that process, we took LaMarcus's feedback. Now, some of that feedback was to pursue players that really weren't a great fit if we had to go in another direction. So at that point, we identified Greg Monroe as a guy who fit both models. We felt like he would be an upgrade for us if we were able to get him if LaMarcus returned. We also felt like he would be a great building block on the same career arc as Damian and CJ and Myers in lieu of LaMarcus if he chose not to return. You know, I, I, look, I'm just trying to follow a model where I want to embrace what we have. And what we have is Damian Lillard, who just made a six-year commitment to the organization. Um, who is a two-time All-Star in his first three years in the league, and C.J. McCollum, who is an emerging star, and Myers Leonard, and the guys that we've acquired since the process began. I want to embrace what they do do, not try to hold on to something that has basically slipped through our fingers. Um, you know, look, as happy as I am for Wes and Rolo, Jace, and they're really good players, and the, the organizations that got them are lucky to have them, both they and their agents were notified very early in the process that they were tied to LaMarcus, that their value to our organization, um, beyond what they contributed as people, but as players, was in the collective. That because they had excelled with LaMarcus being here, because of what they were able to do with their skill set relative to being on the floor with two guys like Damian and LaMarcus, that we were open to bringing both back. We were going to compete in that market. We were probably going to pay a premium to get them back. But if LaMarcus left, it was not a market we were going to compete in. Because at the end of the day, the only answer is, are you good enough to really win? And we would have been in a position with no flexibility, and we probably weren't going to be competitive enough to, competitive enough to justify it. Every roster has a life cycle. 
And we just felt like ours had kind of reached a point where we needed to kind of change course in the event LaMarcus left. So we've been preparing for it. Now, you know, one of the things, you know, I really want to, you know, get across to you guys from the timing standpoint. If you look with LaMarcus, because I know this big question of when did he tell us and, you know, and, and was he hiding something from us or, or were we hiding something? We weren't. The whole process was completely transparent. I am like a son to Arn Tellum. Okay, we spent family time together. There was no way in the world Arn was going to put us in a position to either miss opportunities or to be made look bad if we weren't in this with LaMarcus. Ironically, as the process went on, we became a more viable option. I mean, LaMarcus called and said, look, the more teams I meet, the more I realize how good I have things in Portland. Arn called, same thing, and said, look, the longer this goes, the more viable you guys become. You know, some people may be scratching their head and saying, okay, you know you weren't going to bring back Matthews and Lopez and even Aldridge, why didn't you go out and get something for them and sign in trades? Can you explain why you chose not to go that route? Sure. Um, the teams weren't interested. Um, you know, the sign and trade is a great idea when you're dealing. And there were there were some teams that initially had contacted us about Lamarcus. That were you know there, there were teams that either had to give up things of so much value that it would have been punitive for them to go after Lamarcus, or you know it would have been prohibitive for them cap wise that needed our participation. Now, because we wanted LaMarcus back, we didn't, we didn't allow them to present it as a viable alternative, but it was always there. And I, and I won't go into what teams they are, you know, they are but you can, probably, you, know, you can probably figure it out. But if you really look at it, all the teams that signed our guys didn't need our participation. Look, the season ended on a down note, and he explored other options, one of which was attractive enough for him to leave the fifth year on the table. It's a testament to the job San Antonio has done building their organization, and, you know, and, and quite honestly to LaMarcus, you know, that he, he did not make a financial decision. LaMarcus made a decision that was best for his family and the best basketball decision he felt like he could make. But that's why. I mean, that's why this was never explored, because why would we have wanted to explore it? I mean, I would have gotten strung up in Pioneer Square if at the trade deadline we were, we were in third place in the West and I traded away LaMarcus Aldridge for fear of what may or may not happen three months later. <laughs> Forget it. I would, I, that's it. I'd have been done. They would have wrapped me up in the new carpet at PDX and shipped me back to L.A. <laughs> so...